critics and audiences alike went crazy for this film straight across the board. Everybody loves it. What was your first reaction when Jordan Peele came to you with the script? Well, he came to me with uh, the idea. Okay. He actually pitched the idea over coffee. Um, and it was, my first reaction was, we have to make this movie because I've never seen it before. At what point did um, Blumhouse Productions get involved? And what is the benefit of having two different production companies? Blumhouse became involved. Jason or, or Jordan had mentioned that he was doing a, this racially themed horror film um, with us. And in an article, I believe it was with Playboy, and Blumhouse came calling after that, wanting to read the script. And we gave them the script, and they immediately freaked out and saw what we had seen in it. And uh, the benefit of it was, you know, what Jason's built at Blumhouse is really a, a huge machine to give movies like this an opportunity to be released in a real way. Mm -hmm. And also just the team he has underneath him at the company is just an exceptional group of people who know how to make films at this budget level. What was the exact moment when you knew you had a massive hit on your hands? Uh, probably when the trailer came out. The reception to the trailer within the first 24 hours we really showed that the movie was going to go beyond our pretty high expectations for it. Why do you think this film appeals to all races? Well, because it's honest. Um, and it's kind of shedding light on a truth that we all kind of know is there, but nobody really wants to talk about. And this film allows people the opportunity to talk about it in a real way. There's a huge twist in this film. How hard was that to keep it a secret once it had screened for audiences? It wasn't too hard because I, pe I think people really responded to the film and, and wanted you know, other audience members to experience it the way they did. So there was a lot of love for the film and I think people wanted to respect you know, the quality of it. This is a horror thriller. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite movie genre? Oh wow, that's a tough one. Um, I love all genres of film. Um, I think I gravitate to the, to the psychological thrillers the most, um, but also very big fan of comedies. When you were a small boy, what film was it that you saw that inspired you to say, I want to be a filmmaker? When my father showed me One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Mm, good choice. Yeah. What was it about that? Just to, it opened my eyes up to great storytelling. And from there, I was able to, you know, when I was growing up, it was the Amblin movies and it was Spielberg. And, and from there, you, you, I really became obsessed with films. And then you get introduced to, you know, Kubrick and Ridley Scott and, and Coppola and all the, all the greats. Um, but it really just started from a pure entertainment factor until I saw um, One Flew Over a Cuckoo's Nest. And it was really just wow, this really is an art form. This isn't just a, this isn't just entertainment. This is also an art form. Mm -hmm. I heard that Jordan Peele first had a different ending, like a darker ending. Was that mm -hmm. in the script that you first saw? Um, it was in the script with the non-darker ending always looming. <laughs> it was a constant debate what to go with. So they both were always kind of in existence and it was really a decision made towards the end of the, the production. So. Now, I understand that people are going to have a chance to see the alternate ending on the mm -hmm. DVD release. What other special features can we expect to see? You'll get to see a lot of uh, outtakes, a lot of you know, different line readings, particularly from uh, Little Rel Howery's character, Rod. <laughs> um, so a lot of funny... We had tough choices when it came to some of these scenes and some of the lines that we ended up putting in the cut. And what can we expect next from you and QC Productions? Because I know you're working on a ton of different films. Uh, we just wrapped production on Time Freak, which is a, a, a romantic comedy uh, with Asa Butterfield and Sophie Turner. Oh. That was a first time writer director, Andrew Bowler, based on his Academy Award nominated short film, which was actually a comedy, which is a rarity to get a acknowledgement for a comedy like that. Um, so that just wrapped and we have about five or six others shooting this year, most of which I can't discuss right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much for talking to me today. Of course, thank you.